I wanted to do a little experiment to see how different a single drawing can look with different mediums. I'm going to be redrawing the same drawing five times with different mediums. Of course, I'm going to start off with watercolor. I will also be using Posca pins and digital, as well as gouache and alcohol markers. I don't know what I was expecting when I did this sort of experimental video, but it was really interesting to not only see the difference in style, but also the way I tackled the same drawing, but with different supplies. It was also eye-opening in a sense, that this could really help those of you that are trying to find your style. I always thought that trying different mediums was helpful to see which one would best work for you, but I never thought it would actually help someone to maybe find their style. Although my style is still my style, you can see that in each piece there is definitely a difference in color choice, vibrancy, line weight, shape, etc. Though the way I draw is still the same. Okay, here we go. So of course we are going to start off with watercolor because it is my primary medium and I use it all the time. So it'll be a really good comparison point to see, I guess how the other mediums really change my main way of drawing, I suppose. You guys see me use watercolor all the time, so it will especially be a really good comparison point for you guys. So as usual with my watercolor illustrations, I start off by penciling and sketching. And then on top of that, I start using a pen to put down the line art. Now, one of the key features about my style, I think, is that I like a really clean look. So no matter what medium I'm using, I like to get that clean, sharp, not painted style and the like. I know with watercolor, it's encouraged to sort of layer your watercolors because they are so layerable. <laughs> I think watercolors are very popular for a sort of realistic medium because you do get to play around with the shadows and the transparency of the watercolor. But with my style, I do like a nice cartoony look. I like to work with kind of cell shaded looks. I don't do a whole lot of layering and blending. So that's a very common theme and very useful for a lot of these other mediums, thankfully for me. Lately, I have been playing around with my watercolor style by doing this sort of fading away in chunks sort of thing. It's hard to see. I think the only place I really use it on this illustration is on the top of the legs and on the base shadow where Hatch is standing. Something that I'm also starting to do with my watercolor illustrations is that hair shine. I didn't normally used to do it, and if I did do it, I think it was more of a solid chunk. But I do think I'm starting to get into doing some more little details in my illustrations, which I don't know if I'm a fan of. And I do think the key feature with this watercolor illustration in particular is the eyeball. I think it's the only one where I use a one solid color for the colored part of the eye, and that's it. For some reason, I just really like that style of eye with watercolor. Speaking of color, something I've noticed for a while now is that I do like to work really earthy when it comes to watercolors. I kind of want to work on making my watercolors a little brighter, but as of now, I like a good earthy watercolor illustration. And that is quite a main feature between my watercolor illustrations and these other mediums. Next up is Posca pins because they are my second favorite medium and honestly I am still so obsessed with them. I use them quite oppositely, oppositely is that a word, than my watercolors because like I mentioned I use watercolors in a very earthy colored way but with Posca pins you are forced I suppose to work with very very vibrant and saturated colors which honestly I really love. I don't normally like art that is this toxically bright, but something about Posca pins I just love. I love that I get these really bold, colorful shapes and just the overall look of Posca pins is really fun. I don't know if I would work that way with watercolor if I was forced to use only really bright colors. Something about my really bright watercolors seems unappealing to me, but with Posca pins, I love it. I don't know why. Maybe because the tips are round, so I work with a lot of rounder, bolder shapes. Speaking of, you can already tell that this illustration in particular is a lot wider and just, excuse my meme, thicker all around. The limbs are thicker, the shapes are just more round and bigger. Like I said, the tips of these pins only vary so much in size, they are very large. And also it's just not a good idea to color in a lot of space with very small Posca pin tips anyways. So going into this illustration, I knew that it would be a lot rounder. Also, I mentioned this a lot when I use my Posca pins, but I really don't like to use the color black. I just find that because Posca pins are so bright and colorful, using black is such 
I don't know, just a really instant way to dull down the image when you are forced to work so brightly. You might as well use this dark blue instead. So I used no black in the image and instead I used this blue color and wow, it really, really makes it pop. Also, also the shading is very minimal when I do Posca pins and I usually like to put a little background shape just to make it pop a little bit more and just have some extra fun color. So there's my Posca pin illustration. You can still see that it is my style, but the vibrant colors and the way I shade in everything as a style changes. Next up is gouache, which honestly, before I used it earlier this year, I thought would be the perfect medium for me. Before I got really into traditional art, I did a lot of lineless styles with digital art. So I knew a little bit about gouache going into it. I knew that it was very good for a lineless style because unlike watercolor, it's opaque. So you can put the paint on top of each other and get a really smooth, bold shape. It's kind of like Posca pins meets watercolor in the sense I guess that you can mix colors and that's in a tube and not a pin variety. I will say I have quite a love-hate relationship with gouache. Like I said, I think this way of painting and illustrating is perfect for my style. I really love the results, but I think I just might be too lazy to learn how to use it. This took me way too long to paint. I just can't seem to get a grasp on the right mixture of paint to water because it is essentially a watercolor. You can add water to it to thin it out or thick it out. Thick it out? That is not a thing. I think my main problem is that I don't want to add too much water and make it translucent like watercolor. I want to use it as gouache, as an opaque medium. So I end up not adding enough water and then it's really hard to move because it's just this really thick goopy stuff. So then I add water to thin it out and I end up thinning it out too much. But oh my goodness, that aside, I like this medium. For some reason, it does make me want to work a little more with vibrant colors than watercolor again. And I really like to work with the dry brushing. Like I said, I end up putting too much thick paint on it, so it's goopy. But then I get this really neat paint texture that I like to work with with gouache for some reason. I do have the option of making a really smooth surface or I can make a very textured surface. So I do like that and I really like the way this gouache version turned out. Move over watercolor, you're the least liked so far. Next up is digital art, which I seem to have completely ditched since getting more into traditional art these past few years. It's fun and it is a very chill medium to work with since you don't have to worry about making permanent mistakes. You can always erase things and you have lots of layers and it's really chill and fun to play around with. But I digress. When it comes to digital art, I had two options because when I did digital art, I mainly worked with Illustrator, which is a vector program. I also mainly worked with line art images, but for the sake of this video, I wanted to work with my lineless style just to give more variety because most of my images so far have had line work. So I went to Photoshop where I do most of my lineless style drawings and it was a lot of fun. Really, I love revisiting digital art. Like I said, it's something I so rarely do, maybe a few times a year now. It's so sad, but I do enjoy it. Once again, digital art is not something I really like to work with earthy tones. I don't know what it is. I usually work pretty dang bright when it comes to digital art. I don't know if it's just because it's easy to do. I don't know why I like working earthy so much with watercolor. It is, it is still a mystery to me. We'll figure it out. So please ignore the way I work digitally. I know it's probably not the best or most efficient way, but like I said, I don't do it that much. I put all of the base colors down under the original sketch from my sketchbook and then I got to adding little details and shading and all that stuff. So once again, this is another medium where my shading is kind of random, doesn't make a whole lot of sense. It's just kind of where I want to put it at the time. And although I did say watercolor was the only one where the eyeball has one color, I forgot. Nope. I did it for my digital art as well. So it's just the one single light blue color. Overall, I actually really like the digital style too. I really do miss going lineless and maybe I do like bright colors. I'm learning a lot about myself in this video.
And last but not least, I will be using alcohol markers, which is a very new medium to me. I've only been using alcohol markers for about a month now. I use the brand Ohuhu, which I've made a video about. They're very good for beginners, so I'm glad to have a very cheap alternative to Copics to sort of get myself started and familiar with alcohol markers. I don't know if it's because Copic markers are mainly used to create manga or whatever the heck it is. I don't know what it is, but when I got the alcohol markers and started sketching in my marker sketchbook, I started drawing noses that aren't triangles. Sort of like anime noses. You know, not a nose that's a triangle shape. Don't know what it is. Don't know why I started doing this. My style is also less angular, I feel like, when I use alcohol markers. Again, not sure what's going on. My marker sketchbook is full of drawings without triangle noses. Who am I? I don't even know. So something that I've noticed straight away is that with alcohol markers, you are limited to the colors you use. And I feel like it's not usually a good variety of colors. With Posca pins, I only have about 25 colors, but they're like good colors. With alcohol markers, I feel like, what even are these colors? There was no good skin tone. I either had to color Hatch's skin the darkest and brownest of browns, or some sort of sandy color that just didn't look like a live person's skin color. So I did a few color tests where I put down the really dark brown and then went over it with a sort of light tan color. And it did take away some of that darkness. It was a little patchy, but it looked okay. And then I did it on the actual illustration and it was patchy like heck and it looked like garbage. So overall, not the best one. And obviously I am still getting used to my alcohol markers, so it's not the best. Alcohol markers are also the reason why I started doing the more detailed eye with the darker color and the shine. Not only that, but because of Inktober, I've been incorporating a lot more of the hatching. So I do that line work a lot more into my alcohol markers, but not so much my other illustrations. So my main takeaway from alcohol markers, triangle nose is gone. Don't know why, kind of freaks me out. But there it is. So I hope you guys enjoyed this sort of experimental video with different mediums. Maybe you guys can go out there and try different mediums yourself. Like I said, never thought it would help maybe encourage your style so much, but it was a really interesting and fun experiment. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. And now a huge thank you to my wonderful patrons for all of their support. You guys are the best. If you want to be in the credits at the end of my videos, see secret sketches, coloring pages, early access, and more, check out my Patreon by clicking a link in the description. Thank you guys all so much for the support. Bye!